<clears throat> Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. <clears throat> Today, the topic is uh, stockpiling, uh, pasture clipping, big blue stem, diversity. This is a whole uh, series of different items I want to talk about today. Uh, we're on a farm here. Uh, this is one of our lease farms, and uh, we've had this one since uh, 2017, so about three years. Um, this was the farm that didn't have any livestock on it for about 70 years. Um, it was just hay field. Um, matter of fact, the people who lived here, I actually bailed the hay one year. Uh, I had somebody bail it for me. Thank goodness I didn't take very many bales. I did it one time. So it didn't get bankrupt, the soil. Too bad, but it didn't have anything done with it. it just a thatch growing out here. There wasn't any clover on this whole farm. Uh, there just wasn't hardly anything. A lot of brambles, a lot of cedar trees. And we we have unrolled hay in here, and once I did get the uh, the uh, contract on it, I got a ten year lease on this farm, and that gave me some commitment from the landowners. And so I came in here. We did put down two ton of lime per acre, and then we put down some phosphorus and some potash. Eighty pounds of phosphorus, and I think it was like sixty pounds of potash. And didn't put down any nitrogen. Um, but the, between the animals, uh, we hit this uh, 30 days ago with the uh, flurd. It had the uh, it had the bulls and the sheep with it, and uh, we rotated them around here. We got one pond back here in the middle of this farm. It services this whole thing. This is 120 acres. I'd say we've got probably 35 to 40 acres of grazing on. The rest is all timber. Um, but we are developing some civil pasture on it. I'm really excited about that. We've got some beautiful areas where there's trees, forage, and almost every time we come in here, you'll see turkeys around the edges of these woods and deer as well. And I'm a hunter. I love seeing wildlife, and I like building habitat for wildlife. Now, back to what, we, what we're looking at here. This has had 30 days rest. As soon as the sheep went out of it, it had a lot of thatch in it. It had brambles. Uh, there was some honey locusts. I came in here and I clipped this whole farm, and uh, I took about I took it down to about six to seven inches, so about this height. And it was perfectly. I hit it perfect. As soon as I brush hogged it, we got a rain on it. And since then, I think we've recorded five rains. And so it's it's been hit with rain. And so this is the result of clipping. All the thatch that I mowed down is down here. A lot of it's already gone. The earthworms have ate it. But look what we have. So we have big blue stem. All this beautiful big blue coming up. We've got the uh, Korean Lespedeza. We've got brand new red clover coming up out of this thatch. Um, there's a ton of orchard grass coming up. Especially up around that old home site up there. There's orchard grass just everywhere. Uh, this is uh, July 31st, so we are in the beginning uh, official uh, stockpiling season. Um, so, the, you know, I did a video here um, this, last week on whether to clip or not to clip. Well, in this case, Ben and I just put a sheep fence in from the road all the way back to the back of this farm. One wire right down the middle of the farm. And so we're going to strip graze. We're going to strip graze off the east side of the farm all the way to the end using the water tank as our starting point and then we're going to bring them back toward the road coming down this side of the wire going back to their pond for their water point so once we beat it up with sheep we really don't have to keep in a back fence they're not going to go back um, but what we've got here is probably some of the most premium grazing i've ever seen on a farm at this stage we've had it three years look at that i mean folks you can't you can't uh, do a painting or a drawing and draw up a better piece of forage than what you're looking at right there that's about 60 percent big blue and so by taking off all that thatch that i had in here it released the big blue it fed the soil all this litter i say all the litter i can't hardly find it it's gone the, the worms have ate a lot of it. And uh, the, the Korean Lespedeza is just cranking. So when the sheep come in here, they're going to be pretty happy campers. Um, we've got um, the best lamb crop we've ever had this year. Uh, we had 1.87 lambs per ewe. And that's without any grain, no hay. There was no hay fed to those sheep all winter long. 
and we do give them a mineral. Um, we put them on free choice mineral last fall, the cafeteria style. I've never done that before, but I thought, you know, I'm going to try it. And I don't know, that could have contributed some to our increased lambing rate. The best we'd ever done was about 1.7. We've been averaging about 1.3 to 1.4 lambs per year. This year, 1.87. I was just blown away. So I'm very, very enthusiastic about the sheep. And, you know, Ben, ben asked me a question a while ago. You know, if you're starting out, uh, you know, sheep are a tremendous cash flow. And that's because you get your money back in a year. I mean, you breed the, you, you expose the, the ewe lamb at seven months of age to a ram. She gives you a lamb at, when she turns one year of age. You've got something to sell 16 weeks later, four months. You can't do that with cattle. Um, you can't breed a heifer until they're 15 months, and then it's two years of age before they give you a calf. Well, then you've got to wait another seven months to wean the calf to have something to sell. So sheep, your cash flow is a lot quicker. So if you're starting out, you don't have a lot of income, you don't have a great big acreage, I'd be looking real hard, seriously, at sheep. And if you want a couple bees for the freezer, you maybe throw a couple steers in there with them. But just remember this. A cow is 1,000 pounds. A St. Croix ewe is about 120 to 130. So you're talking six to seven, seven ewes to equal one cow. You can run a whole lot more sheep out here on land like this than you can cows. So starting out, you know, if you don't have a lot of income, that's what I'd be focused on. Um, so we're really uh, excited to get the sheep on here. Uh, what we did is Ben and I put in a front fence. You might say it's like a, just a, a division to, to cut them off up here at the pond. We're going to bring them into this farm. We walk, we, they're right on the next farm attached to this, which is kind of cool. We've got 12 farms here on part of our operation. They're all fastened together now. They're all leased except for one. We own that one. But we're going to walk them up this lane, and so we're going to walk them clear to the pond. We're gonna, we've already got the fence in. And as soon as they go up there, Ben and Isaac and I will just come in behind those sheep and put in a one-wire fence. I guess that's the other thing I want to promote is, you know, get your sheep broke to one hot wire. When you have one hot wire, see, this, this property doesn't have any interior fence on it at all. And I did that intentionally. I've got a perimeter, and the whole perimeter is hot all the way around this whole farm. I can go anywhere on this farm, and I can draw power. I can hook on cold. I can go here and strip graze off this corner or whatever. But when you get sheep broke to one wire, you don't want a lot of interior fence in here because it's, it's just going to mess you up. Ben and I couldn't have done what we did right there. We ran one wire the full length of this farm, and there was nothing in our way. It's just like a canvas and a painter. Okay, you're the painter, and the canvas is your landscape. You can do anything you want to that. And uh, so that's what I'm excited about. We're going to bring the sheep in. I'm telling you, you, you'll be able to see a smile on their face when they come in here. They're going to be so happy, and we're going to be happy seeing sheep eat this. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is all the blooms. There's a lot of fresh blooms coming up. You can just hear a buzz in here. And the buzz are honeybees and bumblebees. They're all in here. And uh, my wife's into bees, and so is her girlfriend. I think they need a hive over here. <laughs> we could... We could really be capturing a lot of honey, so we need to get some hives here on this farm for sure. I'm going to bring Jen over to show her that she's going to freak. Um, but there's an opportunity here for, for some bees. Um, the autumn some of you all might see the autumn in this pasture. Um, 20 years, not even 20 years ago, seven years ago, when I, if I'd have leased this farm seven years ago, that'd been the first tree I would have cut. I'd have come in with a chainsaw and I'd have cut those dudes down. Ah, oh, those things are nasty. I'm getting rid of them. But folks, they're shade, they're structure, they're shelter, they are a legume, they're putting nitrogen. The animals love eating the leaves on them, and so I, I kind of like them like this. And as long as I've got a tractor and brush hog, I'm not going to let them take over this farm. I'm just not. And they look the same way they did since I've leased this farm. We, we, we keep them in check, and you can come over on a really hot day when it's 95 degrees. There'll be four or five animals packed in around there cows and they're all laid down they're comfortable they use them as back rubs so it is an invasive species and it will take over your farm if you let it <laughs> so i'll warn you before you plan any of these things make sure you have the means to control them because they are a beast when they get going
Um, they do have a, a, a seed on them. It's a little red seed that comes in in the fall and the birds eat it and they poop it out across your farm. So have some animals. You might want some mechanical means too and they get really thick. Don't let them get that way. Um, I mean, I, I like what I see here. It's very picturesque. Um, it just looks like if I was an animal coming in here, I would be a pretty happy camper. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to sign off. But one of the first things that we did on this farm, I'll cover that. It is, it is a lease farm. It didn't have any fence on it. it. had a pond. The landowner said keep the animals out of the pond. So we ran a, wire, a hose over the dam, a siphon, and it took them into a tank back there. So we don't let the animals in the pond. She's, she likes to fish, and I do too. I don't think animals belong in ponds. Uh, so we built our perimeter fence. We put, of course, we protected the pond, and we were up and going, folks. I mean, we got a 10-year lease on this. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a very, very good relationship. They come out here. They enjoy the place. They say, Greg, it looks like a park. We've never seen it look so pretty. Well, it never was taken care of like this. Um, just remember, when you're in the land leasing business, you're also in the land beautification business. And this is a show place. So I can bring prospective landowners out here, show them this, and go, how would you like the place to look like this? Well, folks, it wouldn't look like this if I hadn't brush hogged it. And people say, well, you're just wasting your time brush hogging. Are you? What if you get a 10-year a free lease from a hunter? Because you can make it look like Folks, this is a salad bar out here. This is a food plot. When Ben and I were putting in the fence a while ago, there was all these little beds everywhere out here. You can see where the deer are nipping. This, I don't have to plant a food plot. The, the animals, the, the livestock have done this for us. So go to prospective uh, deer hunters. Maybe show them this video. I don't know, but get your foot in the door and say look we're not talking about putting animals out there and grazing it down to a moonscape the animals are only going to be on your farm for half a day at a time around your farm and when we leave we're going to let it come back and look like this now you've got something to sell you've got your management to sell and that's what you're doing you're selling your management for the cost of that lease okay so with that uh everybody i'm going to sign off you new subscribe new viewers hit that subscribe button on the way out i need you and hit that like button too. Thank you all. We'll see you down the road.